What's up everybody, welcome to Coding with Chaim. Did you know that React offers a function called react.memo, which is meant to help you optimize performance? Also, did you know that React offers a hook called useCallback, which is meant to help you optimize performance? And also, did you know that React offers another hook called useMemo, which is meant to help you optimize performance? Are you confused? I was too. So let's clarify that in this video. So let's first take a look at how react.memo works. So take for example, what we have here on screen, right? We have a component called app, which is rendering this child component right over here. Child component is expecting this child number as a prop to get passed down. What we have also is the fact that our local component, the one this app component right over here, actually has a function that when you click that function, local number is gonna change. So in other words, when you call increment local, only this local number variable here is gonna change. Child number won't actually change. And so what I would like to do now is if I'm actually clicking on this button to change local number, I would like to have it where the child component doesn't actually re-render. But as it stands right now, every single time I'm going to actually click on this increment local button right over here, what's gonna happen is child will actually render, which we're gonna see based on the fact that we have this console log right over here. So let's actually demonstrate that in action. All right, so if I come here and I go, if I go ahead and now I click on click to increment local as you can see here we're getting this console log here if i click it again we see that the local variable is changing the child number is not in fact changing so therefore the actual property that's being passed down to the child is not changing but despite that we still actually have the child component going through another render cycle as you can see based on the fact that we're getting another console log so let's fix that Okay, so what I've done here is I basically imported this function called memo from React. And then down here on line 17, when I'm actually going to export my child component, I'm gonna first wrap it in memo. And basically all memo does is it basically looks at the props that are kind of incoming into the component and it basically says, I will only re-render you if any of the props that you are receiving is in fact changing. So let's go ahead and see that now in action. So we're gonna come back to the app. So previously when I clicked on uh, click to increment local child component was re-rendering, but as you can see now, the local number is changing, but since the child number is not in fact changing, I can keep clicking this, but the child component is not actually rendering. And so that's basically what memo actually does. Again, very simply, if you have any props that are kind of going down to a component and you only want the component to actually re-render if its props are actually changing, you can use memo to basically say, only allow me to re-render if my incoming props are changing. So long as my incoming props are now changing, don't re-render me. So now let's actually go ahead and take a look at how use callback works. So in order to understand how use callback works, we first have to actually go ahead and break our memo. So let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so basically what I've done now is I've effectively created a new function called change child number. Now change child number is basically gonna be a function that will receive a number as an argument coming back from the child. And then we're gonna call the set child number uh, state handler right over here. And we're gonna set up that new number, right? So basically now we actually go down to the child. The child has its own button, which when you click on this button, it'll go ahead and call the change number uh, function right over here, which would then call up to the parent components a change number function that's being passed on via props. And so now we're going to go ahead and just pass in math.random to kind of just change it to a new, a new number every single time. Okay. So now what I want to show you is with this little change that I just did by passing down a function as a prop to the child component, this component will now no longer be properly memoized and will render every single time. Effectively, I have now broken all the sort of performance optimizations that I've added in earlier when I was using memo. Okay. So now that we actually come back to the app, I'm only going to click on the actual button to increment the number that's locally inside of app and not inside of child. Now watch what happens. I click on that. And once again, now we actually see that this console log here is still logging inside of the child component, even though I've used memo. So effectively, I've broken my memoization, but this is where the use callback hook will now come in very handy. So in order for us to actually understand what just happened, let's talk about something known as referential equality. So say for example, I have a variable called x whose value is 10, and then I have another variable b whose value is 10. If I now in console.log, if I now in line four do console.log x is equal equal to b, if I run this code, I'll see that I actually get the output of true. Because effectively what JavaScript is telling me now is that the value of x and the value of b are the same. Effectively here, what we're actually doing is we're comparing values. But what if I did the following?
now basically what I've done is I basically made it where the where X is now an object that has a key on it whose value is 10 and B is now also an object that has a key in it whose value is 10. So if I now go ahead and run this code, if I now say console log, tell me whether or not X is equal equal to B, what would you expect the output to be? So let's run it and see what happens. As it turns out, now I'm actually getting false. So even though these objects look to be exactly the same, still, if I try to compare one to the other one, I'm actually getting false. And the reason for that is because whenever we compare objects in JavaScript, what we're actually doing is we're basically checking the referential equality. Basically, we're trying to see whether or not both of these objects are sort of allocated in the same space in memory. If I did this, if I went ahead and said that B is equal to X, if I now go ahead and say X is equal equal to B, I will actually get true. Now, the reason for the reason why I'm now getting true is not because but in both cases now, they're both the same object, object that have the same key whose value is 10. The reason why I'm now actually getting true is because both of these variables, both B and X are both pointing to the same spot in memory. In other words, what we're doing is we're basically doing referential equality. You don't actually have a brand new object. We have the same object, but with a new variable to kind of point back to that same object in memory. So now when you come back to our React code here, when we're basically passing down this change child number function down as a prop to the child component, basically in every single render, what we're actually doing is we're creating an entirely brand new function. And then what ends up happening is the memo, the react.memo function that we basically wrapped our child component around, what it's trying to do to determine of whether or not a new prop has been passed down is it's basically just trying to do referential equality. In other words, it's not interested in comparing values because comparing values can be a slightly more expensive operation. It's trying to be as efficient as possible. So it's only trying to check the reference to see if the objects are in the same place in memory. And so what ends up happening is every single time we go through another render cycle, we're ultimately creating a brand new object. And so therefore we're actually breaking the referential equality. So how do we fix that? Well, as it turns out, that's where use callback actually comes into play. Okay, so basically what I've done is I'm effectively creating a new function called memoize callback. So use callback as a hook that we get from React. And what it actually does is the following. Basically, it accepts two arguments and then returns a new function. So basically, the first argument is going to be the actual function that you kind of want to memoize. So in other words, here we're basically saying that I'm going to have a function that will accept a number as an argument. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and call whatever function I want. In this case, I'm trying to memoize the child number function. And then I'm going to take the number that we received and then pass it onwards to the actual child number function. And then we have this dependency array that basically says that just like with use effect, we kind of have the dependency array that we only want things to change if things within the dependency array change. In this case, we basically never want this to change. Therefore, we can just use an empty dependency array. But the point here basically now is that throughout the life cycle of this component, memoize callback will always be the same function in memory. We're never actually going to be creating a new function. So even as we kind of go through other render cycles, where previously we kept creating a new function for every render cycle, which then ultimately broke the way that React that memo worked, now we're just going to keep using the same function over and over and over again, of course with different values, but the function will, will basically stay referentially the same. And so now if I actually go ahead and pass memoize callback down to the child component and run this code, at this point, even if I'm actually going to go ahead and try to do click to increment local, you can see that the local number changes but the actual console log of here doesn't actually happen. But if I actually go ahead and try to click the child number to change, now the child value changes, but the, and, and then the console log actually shows up. But as long as I'm only changing the local variable, even though I'm technically still passing down a function, but since now I'm not passing down a new function, I'm continuously passing down the same function because of use callback, because I've, I've effectively memoized my callback function. Therefore now the component will actually only render if the props that are kind of coming down to it are actually changing. So basically now react.memo is once again working by the power of use callback. Finally, let's actually talk about the use memo hook. Okay, so let's for example, assume that we have an array with the numbers one through 18. Now, of course, this is a very contrived example, but this will at least allow us to illustrate how react or the use memo hook actually works and what its benefits are. So let's imagine we have this really large array. And on every single render, we're basically trying to compute or we're trying to output what is the largest number given an array. Okay. And so what we basically have here is we have this H1 that'll say, give me the largest number. It'll then on every render call this get largest number function. And all get largest number really does is it does a math.max math.max 
on the array. And this would presumably be a very expensive operation, so we don't really want to make this happen in every single render. But as it stands right now, it is actually going to happen in every single render, as I'm going to demonstrate right now. So if I now come to the app, and if I go ahead and click on increment local, every single time I click that, or if I try to click the child component, every single time you can basically see the I am working log is actually happening. And this is because on every single render, we once again are calling that same function. And we're once again going through the recomputation to get the largest number within the array on every single render. Now, of course, this is wildly inefficient on a very expensive operation. So let's go ahead and make this more efficient using the use memo hook. Okay, so what I've done is I've imported use memo. And now here I'm basically going to use the use memo hook. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to create a new value called a memoize value. And so use memo will accept the function as an argument. And basically it's going to say, it's going to do the following. It's going to basically say, I'm going to cache the value that this function outputs until such time that the arguments that this function depends on actually changes. So since what's going to happen here is the get largest number function depends on the array, I'm going to pass this array that we now have on state as a dependency inside of the dependency array. And so until such time that this array doesn't actually change, what's going to happen is get largest number will just get, will just always give me back the memoize value. In other words, the last computed value that it actually has. And so now when I actually come down here to my H1 where I'm outputting the largest number, instead of actually calling the function directly inside of my JSX, what I'm actually doing is I'm simply going to put the memoize value right over there. And so just to kind of prove that this all works, I've actually also added a button that when you click on the button, we're basically going to change what the array is set to. So right now the, the array is basically a number that kind of goes from the numbers 1 through 14. But when you actually go ahead and click on this button, we're now going to make it be a new array that goes from 60 to 90. And so what's, what's going to happen is so long as the array basically stays the same, no matter how many times the component actually goes and re-renders for various other reasons, this function of get largest number will not be recomputing and will basically be able to see that by the fact that we're not actually getting this console log again. But then once I go ahead and click this button to actually change the array, now we are basically busting the cache so this function will have to go ahead and recompute it and we're actually going to see that this function will in fact run the one time as we're actually changing what the array is set to. So let's actually see that in action. All right so basically I just refreshed the browser and as you can see right over here we have the largest number is basically 14 and if you look at the console logs you can see that the I am working ran one time because it basically ran the first time before it's, the value has actually been memoized. And if I click on any one of these functions to go ahead and call this function to re-render again, or in other words, to cause the app component to render again, you can see that these values are changing. Local is changing, the child number is changing, but the largest number is still saying set to 14. And crucially, we're not actually seeing any more working logs inside of our console log to indicate that that function is not, is not actually going through the process of recomputing the value to find the largest number within the array. But if I go ahead and do change array, now you can see we get the number 90, and we are seeing that it is in fact working. But now if I come back here and if I change any of the other values, once again, now it's back to being memoized at the new value of 90. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.